Ortho mosaics are powerful tools in the construction industry, the agriculture industry, and for development projects. If you'd like to learn more about what an ortho mosaic is and how it is being used across these industries, check out our article linked in the video description. We go into much greater detail. In this video, we are focusing on how you can create an ortho mosaic using a software program called Drone Deploy. Drone Deploy is one of many software tools available that allows you to stitch aerial imagery together to create high detail and resolution ortho mosaic maps. There are three basic steps for creating your ortho mosaic. First, you're going to create your automated flight plan. Second, you're going to fly the flight plan and capture your imagery. And third, you're going to upload the imagery to Drone Deploy, which will take the photos, automatically ortho rectify them, and stitch them together to create your ortho mosaic. First, to create your map plan, you're gonna come up to the top left of the screen and click new project. Enter the address of your project. In our case, we have a construction project in Framingham, Massachusetts. Click on the address of your project and Drone Deploy will zoom you in to your address. If you'd like, you can zoom in a little bit more on the map, make sure you can see your property and then click create project here. Next, you can give your project a name and click continue. To create your map plan, come over to the left of the screen and select maps and models. Drone Deploy will place a square flight plan on your map to modify the perimeter, click and drag on the little dots and you can extend the map to cover your entire property. You can also add new dots by clicking on the middle between these waypoints. Adjust the map as needed to make sure it encompasses all of your property with a healthy distance between the edge of your map and the edge of your property. Once your map plan is positioned, you can come over to the side where you can give it a name. I like to title it the altitude I'll be flying at. And then you can customize your flight options. The first option is the flight altitude. Modifying this impacts the resolution of the map. At 200 feet, we're looking at a 0.7 inch per pixel resolution, which is pretty high. Drone Deploy does recommend a higher altitude for a higher quality map, but you can adjust the altitude depending on your project and possible obstructions that could be on site. For this project, we're going to leave the altitude at the suggested 200 feet. Your next option is Enhanced 3D. This enables the crisscross pattern on your map for additional imagery and data in order to produce higher quality 3D models, which is a feature available in Drone Deploy. If you toggle that off, you can see the cross pattern has disappeared and the flight time has decreased significantly. If you just need a 2D ortho mosaic, you're fine leaving the enhanced 3D turned off. However, if you do want a 3D model, then I suggest leaving that turned on. The next option is to turn live map on or off. This generates a map as your drone is flying and can be helpful for providing a live overview of what the construction site looks like or what a crop field looks like as well. Next, you can go into the advanced settings and here you get to customize a lot more options. If you turn off automatic settings, you can customize front lap, which is what percentage of one photo overlaps with the photo taken in front of it. Side lap, the percentage of what photo overlaps with the photo on either side of it. The flight direction, we recommend experimenting with this as oftentimes you can find an angle that will reduce your flight time. You can see altering it, I went up to 18 minutes. Now we're at 1731, that's a pretty good time. Your next setting is the mapping flight speed. Typically, it's best to leave this at the default value, which is often the maximum flight speed available. If you're gonna be flying in a lower light environment, it can be beneficial to decrease your flight speed for higher quality low light photos. For this project, I'm gonna leave the flight speed at the recommended maximum speed. Your starting waypoint is where your drone starts from on the map. Altering this alters where the drone actually begins and will decrease the amount of imagery you capture. You only need to change this setting if you are continuing to capture imagery from an already started project. We recommend leaving the starting waypoint at one to make sure your entire map is captured. Next, you have options for enhanced 3D. Perimeter 3D is where your drone will fly around the perimeter of your map and capture additional imagery for enhanced 3D detail. And again, you have that crosshatch 3D for getting additional detail to improve the quality of your 3D model. If you need to have a shorter flight time, disabling crosshatch 3D 
will drastically decrease your flight time uh, along with perimeter 3D, but at the sacrifice of the detail of your 3D model. The final settings include obstacle avoidance, which enables drone deploy to access the data from the obstacle avoidance sensors on your drone and stop the drone if it detects an obstacle. We recommend leaving that turned on. Show existing map will display a previously recorded map in drone deploy uh, if there is one available. Low light increases the ISO of your image. Drone deploy recommends decreasing your flight speed if you are flying in a low light environment. Typically, you can leave this turned off. And the last options here are to set exposure manually in DJI Go and to set focus manually in DJI Go. Typically, you can leave these turned off as most DJI drones allow drone deploy to use the automatic camera settings and the map will turn out just fine. Otherwise, let's say you have a white rooftop, you're concerned the white rooftop will be overexposed. That's where you can set the exposure manually in DJI Go before beginning your flight. And the same goes for setting the focus. If you're using a drone with a different camera, you may want to set the focus manually. Uh, but again, often you can just leave these turned off. And with your flight plan configured, you are basically ready to fly. All your changes are automatically saved in drone deploy. And the next step is to go out on site and capture your imagery. When you're on site, simply connect your drone as you normally would, and instead of launching DJI Go, launch Drone Deploy. Drone Deploy should automatically detect your drone, run a pre-flight check, and when you're ready, you can tap Take Off, and Drone Deploy will send your drone on your automated flight plan. Your drone will automatically begin capturing imagery, and when it's done, it will land back at the home point. With your imagery captured, the third and final step is to upload it to Drone Deploy. Simply go to the Upload tab and then on the left, click New Upload. Here, create a map or model, give your project a name, and then select your aerial photos. There should be quite a lot of them. Select them all and begin uploading them to Drone Deploy. Drone Deploy will plot them out on the map so you can see where they were taken. You can kind of see the crosshatch pattern and then select what type of map you are generating. You can choose either terrain or structure. In our case, we're doing a construction site, which does have a large structure on it. So I'm gonna select that. You can view your images, add ground control points for more accurate data, and even change some settings. Here you can choose processing speed or quality. Typically, I prefer going with the higher quality. When you're done, you can click Upload Images, in our case, 2.1 gigs of aerial photos. Drone Deploy will upload your images, process them, ortho rectify them, make sure they are geometrically accurate, and then merge them together to create your ortho mosaic map. You'll get a notice that your files were uploaded successfully and that your map is processing. Drone Deploy will email you when it's ready. When your map has finished processing, you can use it to get an updated and high resolution aerial view of your site and use it to measure true distances. Drone Deploy has tools to measure distance, area, and volume. And you can see here, we were using it to calculate the dimensions of a rooftop. So that is how you create an ortho mosaic map in Drone Deploy. If you're interested in learning more about how to use Drone Deploy to measure a rooftop, we have a video actually comparing Drone Deploy with RoofSnap to powerful roof measuring tools. Otherwise, that wraps up this video. There's a link in the video description with a full article covering over the steps we went through in this video. Subscribe for more videos like this one and sign up for our newsletter to get our videos sent directly to your inbox.